Now, at the risk of being confusing, there's other ways to classify law. And what we have here is one of the other main ways that we discern law. We can look at law as either public law or private law. So what's the big difference? Public law looks at the relationship between the citizen and the state, right? It gives the rights and responsibilities between the government and the citizen. So examples of public law are constitutional law, right? What power does the federal government have? Administrative law, you know, what right does the government have to tell you what to do? Criminal law, because it's the state that prosecutes you and throws you in jail, not the other person. And tax law, because you end up being forced to give your money to the state uh, under taxation law. And all of the citizens right, are subject to this relationship with the state. The second area of law we have is private law. And it's not about the relationship between the citizen and the state, it's the relationship between people in the community. So in private law, a tort or defamation, when one person says something uh, about another or trespasses on their land, etc. Contract law, an agreement between people, and so on. These are about the relationship between uh, parties, between persons, legal persons. Um, so a lot of business is going to be kind of concentrated in this private law area. But at times, you know, we all have to pay tax, for instance, public law is important. For our learning, we're going to concentrate just on these five areas of law, constitutional law, administrative law, tort contract and intellectual property. These two are public law, right, because it says the uh, relationship between the state and the individual. What power does the government, particularly the federal government, have? Okay. What power does it have constitutionally? Administrative law. Um, can they uh, actually, actually make and enforce the legislation? How they go about doing that? They have to do it a certain way. Whereas tort law involves those where we're harmed by the acts or omissions of others. In particular, in this course, we're going to look at negligence, right? So that's a particular area. Contract law, uh, the law regulating uh, agreements between people, legal agreements between people. And of course, we do contract. And we also should be aware of IP, the law regulating copyright and trademarks. These three are private laws. And just to make it very confusing, there are lots of these alternative ways. What do you need to be aware of? We need to be able to classify a law as either public or private law. We need to be able to work out whether something is a criminal or civil law and whether it is a case law or statute law. Within case law, we also need to be able to recognise that there's a difference between equity and common law. Look, the main reason for this we'll come back to is that the remedies or the outcomes are different, okay? So if it's traditional common law in sense three, you can only get damages. Equity allow things like uh, injunctions and specific performance. We'll come to this in contract, but there is a reason that we're looking at this distinction. Criminal law is about criminal offences and penalties the state prosecutes people and the standard of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt. Civil law regulates relationships between the community. A civil action is commenced by the person claiming the harm, not the state. The standard of proof is the balance of, pro of probabilities. So this is a big difference, for instance, the standard of proof that's required under these two types of law, which is why it's important to understand this distinction. So case law or common law is judge-made law that operates through the doctrine of precedent, which we'll come to next week, what that means. Contract law is an area of law that's mainly case law, so weeks uh, eight and nine, we do this. Statute law is law made by parliament. You also might hear it called legislation or an act. Example, consumer protection that we do in week 10 is an example of 
where we're looking at statute law. Then when we do negligence, right, in weeks 11 and 12, we deal with an area of law that actually uses both. Okay, so we're giving, that's one of the reasons we've chosen these subjects. So you get a sense of how the common law operates, statute operates, and how they operate together. Finally, common law refers to case law developed by the common law courts in England. It did become rigid and inflexible. An important thing to remember about common law is that if there's a breach of common law, the remedy, the remedy is damages. Equity was developed by the courts of chancery as a response to this uh, rigid inflexibility. And the idea was to base decisions more on fairness and justice than these strict rules. It introduced that idea of making the law more flexible, which was one of the attributes of good law. A key distinction here is that when we're dealing with equity, remedies include specific performance and injunctions, right? So that means we have a different outcome we can get, not just get money. We can stop people doing things, or we might be able to enforce certain actions or contracts. In Australia, common law and equity, that's the sense three, so the common law courts and the equity courts from Chancery, exist as separate branches but judges can choose either. So really in effect, you don't see a lot of difference. We note that equity does not apply to criminal law. It applies to civil disputes, but not all of them. Okay, so it's a, a limited area of law. Okay, that's a fairly big video and a fairly confusing one, but hopefully you can go and apply this. I just think it's through application you'll get a sense of how to apply these classification systems. It might look a bit arbitrary what we're doing by going through these different systems, but I think it will become important as we go on in the course and you'll see some of the effects. So you can only understand what we do later if you, if you understand some of the key principles in these classification systems. So we've had a look at how we can classify law in our legal system. The next step is to look at some of the specifics of the Australian legal system.